There's this thing happening all over the world right now. It's called the bike spike. Bicycle shops are seeing sales unlike ever before. Absolutely thriving during this pandemic. So many people are biking around town. Bike sales right now are double. The bike boom has created a massive shortage. Good luck finding one. Due to the virus slash pandemic, people have been forced to social distance and worse, stay inside. I'm so if there's anything that being human has taught me to do to be happy, it's spend time outdoors. Adventure is up there. I think many people quickly found this out as well, and riding a bicycle was one of the simplest solutions. In fact, it's been one for over 200 years now since German inventor Carl von Drace developed the first bicycle known as the Swift Walker. This pedalless bike made of wood hit the road in 1817. Riders would just walk on top of the bike and their feet would leave the ground only while descending down a hill. It was never intended to be a recreational activity. Actually, Drace was just looking for a substitute for the horses that starved to death in the recent volcanic winter caused by an eruption in 1815. A little melancholy, I know. Since then, there's been so many variations made of two wheelers and here we are today, still enjoying the same simple form of good old human power transportation Lately, I've really just enjoyed cruising. What's there not to love? You're getting good exercise. You're covering a lot more ground than you, you would say going for a walk. It's an affordable, simple way to have a good time. But it wasn't until this bike spike that I really started thinking more about why riding a bike is so enjoyable. It suddenly became something more important in my life. I quickly realized it had become a physical and mental therapy. And I wanted to find out more about how this timeless machine springs so much happiness. Turns out there are a number of scientific explanations behind it, starting with this guy right here. The second you start pedaling, your brain gets a spike of serotonin, the happiness hormone. You may experience a spike of dopamine as well, which makes you feel good, focus more clearly, and react to things quicker. The simple act of riding a two-wheeler fires up extra nerves. It also increases blood levels of a natural cannabinoid called anandamide. Cannabinoids affect the same part of the brain as a natural plant called marijuana. Reefers. Explaining why some people may feel a cyclist high during a longer ride. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You see what's happening here? Yep, I'm in the flow. I'm in the flow, baby. Feeling in the flow. Ah, the flow state. What is the flow state and how do you get into the flow while riding a bike? Well, it's different for everyone. Your experience and skill set can play a role. For one person, flow could be riding down a flat neighborhood street. And for someone else, it may be descending fast down a mountain full of switchbacks. But what you really want is to feel challenged without feeling completely overwhelmed. The flow when riding a bicycle is when our nervous systems are presented with slightly more information than we can process on a conscious level. There's no time to think anymore. The prefrontal cortex shuts down and this subconscious processing takes over. All distractions, busy thoughts, and worries melt away and you become fully absorbed in what you're doing. It's very similar to being in a creative flow. From my research, it was no surprise that riding a bike is good for your brain, lungs, mood, and sleeping patterns. But let's shift gears to the environmental and economic benefits as well. Buying and maintaining a bicycle is roughly 1% of a car, so you're saving money, there's very little wear on roadways, taking up less space, and riding your bike means not burning gasoline, which significantly cuts down your carbon footprint. Now you're saving the environment and less likely to hit an animal than you would be if you're driving a car. It's no wonder so many cities around the world have spent millions of dollars to make their civil engineering more bike friendly. In turn, this has actually led to locals riding their bikes more and shopping local more, so it's boosting the local economy. The challenge right now is the supply is having a hard time keeping up with the demand, but you can at least prepare yourself to be ready to buy one when it becomes available. 
because knowing what bike you want is half the race. There's road bikes, cross bikes, touring bikes, adventure road bikes, triathlon bikes, fitness bikes, fixies, mountain bikes, hybrids, dual sport, cruisers, flat foot, city bikes, BMX bikes, folding bikes, recumbent, tandem, tricycles, <laughs> insane amount. How in the world is anyone supposed to choose with so many options? It really comes down to your environment, the kind of riding you wanna do and the style you like. Does your environment have a lot of elevation? Is it flat? Do you wanna go on trails? Where I live on the coast, of Florida, it's flat and tropical, so a lot of people have beach cruisers. I suggest you talk to your local bike shop or at least do a good bit of research before buying a bicycle and make sure you get the right size. It's important that your bike fits your height. So what have I learned during this whole bike spike? Bicycling is more than just a means of transportation. It enables interaction with others and the environment and thus becomes this sort of free therapy. You have the freedom to go wherever you want, take an alternate route, go fast, go slow. Either way, your stress disappears and you can think deep or think about nothing at all. It's good for your brain, lungs, heart, soul. It's better for the environment, saves money and animals, boosts the local economy and overall happiness. Sometimes when things get really bad and the world's going through a tough situation, there can be some good that comes out of bad situations. And the bike spike is one of them right now. It's a light and a dark time. I genuinely feel for anyone who's been affected, had a loved one affected by the virus. It sucks, it's absolutely awful, and it's been mentally exhausting, socially crippling. So my hope is that you can find something to enjoy while we wait this out, like hopping on a bike. Get out there, use lights at night, wear a helmet if you need to, follow the rules of the road, and have fun. Just please, don't turn a corner and run into a bear.